fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger, so... Prioritize what makes you happy rather than keeping that on the bottom of your to-do list. Hey you! Yes you! Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. A podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people, just like you, who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Today's episode is brought to you by Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, a book by yours truly, Jen Glantz. People always want to know, Jen, what is it like to be a hired bridesmaid for strangers? And look, I've been doing this for the past five years. I'm the world's first and only person to do this. And after a while, I had so many crazy stories to share that I decided to write a book called Always a Bridesmaid for Hire where you can learn about what it's like to start this weird, funky business, walk down the aisle for strangers as their bridesmaid, and also about my own personal quest for love during it all. You can find the book right now on Amazon, Always a Bridesmaid for Hire. The paperback version is called When You Least Expect It. Yes, same book, different title. That's show business, baby. Hey, hey, any youngers? It's me, your host, Jen Glantz. Welcome back to another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It's April, almost May, and you're still not getting any younger. So I ask you this question to kick this episode off. What were you supposed to do this month? Now, you don't have to answer to me. You don't have to answer to your boss. Maybe you do, but you have to answer to yourself. So what was that goal of April that you just didn't do. I want you to think about it. I want you to write it down. And I want you to think about not regretting the fact that it's almost the end of April and you didn't do it. But instead, I want you to think about one, 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 one thing that you can do right now. Start making that goal happen for May. For example, I've mentioned this before, I am trying to train for a marathon and I have milestones in mind. And by the way, marathon, I want to just clarify half marathon, but currently I'm training for a 10K and in April I was supposed to increase my running from three miles to four miles and I didn't. So I'm not going to just go out right now and try to run that fourth mile. I'm not ready, and I know it's going to happen because the same thing has happened every single time in April was that I got to the three-mile mark and I stopped. So my goal, because I did not complete my goal and I'm not getting any younger and this body is not getting any more in love with running as of right now, my goal is this week, this final week of April, I... I'm going to go run those three miles, and then without stopping, I'm going to see how much further I can go. And maybe that's six steps, maybe that's six minutes, maybe that's the whole fourth mile, but that is my goal. My tiny little goal is to take two more steps than I usually do when I run. So what is that one thing that you could also do to help you say at the end of May, you know what, I wasn't lazy on that goal. This week, we have an amazing, incredible guest. Summertime is around. The end of the year is not around, but it is creeping up on us. And usually, those are the two major times that people travel. So in honor of the booming travel season coming up, I know earlier this year, it wasn't so booming with the coronavirus and all of that, but people are sort of getting back in the swing of things when it's about travel. And if you're planning to take a trip in the next couple of months, maybe even next year you have a big trip plan. Some of you listening to this podcast, you're not taking a trip, but you are looking to pack up your life and move somewhere new. So I have an expert on to help you. We have Sarah Mikutel, an American writer, podcast consultant, and host of the podcast Postcat Academy. I messed that up. Postcat. <laughs> okay, Sarah, your podcast name is a tongue twister. Postcard Academy and podcasting step by step. 
She's lived all over Europe since 2010 at the advice of a stranger, and she moved to Italy and acquired dual citizenship. She's incredible, and we talk all about travel, how to pack up your life and move somewhere new, and then continue to keep on moving. Also, how to decide where you want to go if you just want to take a small vacation somewhere. And we talk about literally the art of packing, because for some of us, that is really hard, and we get hit with a ton of fees. I really hope you enjoy our guest, Sarah, this week, and I really hope that you spend some quality time with that one thing you were supposed to do in April and you didn't do. All my love, Jen Glance. Sarah, welcome to the show. Please tell our listeners, if you were at a party with them, how would you introduce yourself? I would say I'm an American living in Europe and for my job, if we're talking about that, I love helping fellow citizens of the world launch podcasts uh, that they love and that bring other people joy. Amazing. I have so many questions about both topics for you, but first I want to hear a little bit about your backstory. So you did something that a lot of people think about doing and maybe even daydream about it and never take action. You packed up your life and you left America. You went somewhere else. So tell us a little bit about your life and your travel history. Yeah, I think it all started when I was 18. So I spent a summer working in the Lake District in England. And it was the hardest job I've ever had in my life. I was a chambermaid. And so I would serve everyone when breakfast and then clean up everything and then clean all the rooms. So, you know, scrubbing the bathtubs and we didn't have a lift. So we were carrying vacuum cleaners up and down the stairs and it was so, so hard, but it was the best, one of the best experiences of my life. It was my first time abroad by myself. And I just fell in love with England and I knew that I wanted to come back here and live here. So I did that for a bit in college. I um, went back and studied abroad my junior year in London for a semester. And I just had this feeling like this is my home, like this is where I want to live. But as Americans, it's not that easy to live abroad. And so I couldn't really figure out how to make it happen for myself. And quite a few years went by and then through like a random internet search, I realized that I was eligible for dual citizenship with Italy because of my ancestry. And so I went through um, the process of gathering all of my family documents dating back to my great grandparents, getting like the names changed legally because that's part of the requirement if you're applying for um, dual citizenship while you're still living in America. You have to get your uh English documents translated into Italian. And so I found a translator online and she was doing this for me. And she said, you know what? When I was living in New York, I applied and they rejected me. Then I moved to Italy, she was telling me, and I had my passport within like a month. So I think you should just move to Italy. And so I didn't know this woman at all, but I was like, hmm, I kind of like that idea. I would rather make it happen now than have to wait years or get rejected from the New York consulate. So I packed up everything in New York and just bought a one-way ticket to Italy. And she was right. I had my uh, Italian passport, which gave me EU citizenship within two months. And I have been living over here for the last 10 years. So ever since. Wow. I mean, it's it's amazing that you took a trip and you realized that this is where you wanted to live your life. What made you so sure? Because a lot of people have a feeling, but they're scared of leaving everything behind. So what made you so sure that you wanted to pack up and move? It was definitely a feeling and just the experiences that I've had over here. So that first summer abroad, and then when I went back and studied abroad, and then I did like some dabbling um, throughout the years before I permanently moved over here. I did like two months here, two months there in Italy. So nothing that required citizenship. I could just go. And I just love the European culture. I mean, Europe's big um, and there is diversity here, but I would say that something that I do value over here is that people respect holiday time, vacation time. They make it a priority. They don't guilt trip people (laughs) and they want to like take time out to live their lives. I think when I lived in New York, uh, you know, I worked for global companies and I would remember like we would be at work and the Europeans, like maybe we'd be trying to get in touch with them and they had clocked out for the night and we'd be like, oh my God, they're so lazy. Like, why aren't they like on their phone 24 seven? And uh, 
and we were thinking like they don't have their priorities in order. And then now that I feel like I've become more European, <laughs> I feel like, oh, the priorities are in order over here, like taking care of yourself, taking care of your family. That's where our priorities should be. So there's definitely that cultural aspect. And then plus, I just love um I love traveling. It's so easy over here in Europe. I love the. I'm a history lover. And so I love getting to experience all of it in real life, seeing castles, you know, touring houses that are hundreds of years old. I just can't get enough of it. It's so interesting because I felt the same way. I, I remember when I used to work like a full-time job, even taking vacation or sick days, I would have anxiety attacks about. And then when I visited Spain and I visited Italy, like that was the norm. Like they, they closed for lunch, you know? It was like, mm -hmm. that is so different than the American culture. And there is so much power in traveling and, and going somewhere new. And one of your podcasts was the Postcard Academy. And you have a website where you give a lot of different travel advice. So, you know, now's a bit of an awkward time to talk about travel with everything happening with the coronavirus and the restrictions. But well, for people who are sitting home right now, they're stuck at home and they, they want to travel when this whole thing is over, but they don't travel much. What are some mm -hmm. of your tips for figuring out where a person should go? Yeah, well, I would say this is going to be over, right? Like we've all been through t hard times before. The world has seen much worse and not to belittle what's happening with the coronavirus, but we're going to make it through this. And so, yeah, now is a good time to think about where you want to go when things calm down and you can go and support like the local mom and pops who are so near and dear to my heart that will make your trip um, so worthwhile. So, you know, things are going to get better. I want everyone to stay in like a positive place about travel. As for like beginners, I would say like make life easy for yourself. If it's your first time travel, may traveling maybe out of the country and maybe you're a little bit nervous, maybe try going somewhere where they're going to speak your language that, you know, so you will feel comfortable walking up to somebody if you have a question or if you if you feel lost. If we're talking about solo travel, then I would definitely think about staying at a hostel. Now, back in the day when I was in like college, I wasn't that into hostels. They were pretty much party places. But like a year or so ago, a friend of mine um, convinced me to go on go to one with her when we were in Oaxaca, Mexico. And it was the most amazing experience. They had private rooms for people who wanted that. But then we stayed in an all woman's room and each bed had like their own chargers and a little like privacy curtain and a place to keep all of your things. And the Wi-Fi was great. And the breakfasts were phenomenal. And it's a great place to meet new friends if you're there. So like we met some cool people. So I would say definitely consider putting yourself in situations where you can meet other people. So I think that's really fun. And then do a walking tour as soon as you can. So that's my favorite thing to do in any city. Go on a walking tour. A lot of them are free. So you tip them at the end and they'll just help you get your bearings. They'll point out like the things that you need to see uh, when you're in the city. So then you can make a note and go back and see more later. And it's also an opportunity to meet new people as well. So maybe you'll meet somebody on the tour you want to hang out with later or have lunch with later. And um, final point I would say is like, know when things are going to be closed when you're there. So often in Europe, the shops are closed on Sunday and the museums are closed on Monday. So if you're planning a long weekend, you want to make sure, you know, you're planning your activities accordingly so that things are going to be open when you want to see them. Oh, that's a good one. I feel like that's a big mistake I make is planning a whole <laughs> trip and then not even realizing it's a holiday or things like that. Um, yeah. That has happened to me so many times. I have a question from someone in the You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. Jessica says, Sarah, your story and background is so inspiring. I personally have the travel bug but want to go solo because I have no one to travel with. What's the number one thing I need to know as a woman to stay safe when I embark on my own travel alone? I guess I would say you, most people, most places are pretty safe, um, at least over here in Europe. I would say like the biggest crimes over here are, are pickpocketing. And so if you're alone and you're worried, like I would make sure your money and your credit cards are always safe. So I would carry a purse where it zips up. And I would also make sure in your hostel or your hotel, like always leave one credit card or debit card behind and some money behind. So in case 
um, anything happens when you're out, if you get pickpocketed, you're going to have that fallback when you go back. Um, I would say, I would say that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I love that. I remember when I traveled to Europe the first time, I was 21, right out of college. And I remember I wore my money like underneath my shirt, if that makes sense. Like I pretty much stuffed uh-huh. my bra <laughs> with my money because they said that like, you know, and even when you travel anywhere, you're a little bit looser with like the purses you wear and things like that. And you could easily get pickpocketed. So that's a great tip. We have so many people in this Facebook group that and who listen to this podcast that want to not only travel but move to a new location. And whether it's domestically in the United States or somewhere all over the country, they want to pick up and go. But a lot of them are curious to know what they should do before making that move. So Marla asks Sarah, what are some of the important things I should research before moving to a new location? What do you have to say to Marla? I guess there's a few questions that you have to ask yourself when you're trying to decide where you want to go. So one thing that I like to say is think about who you are now and not who you aspire to be. A lot of us have like these fantasies of ourselves, like someday I'm going to be so laid back or like someday I'm going to be so type A and on it and like, you know, and like, so who are you now? Would you enjoy living in a slow paced country or would that drive you crazy? You know, where, what do you enjoy doing? Do you want to be in a city center where there's lots of culture and action? Maybe you want to live in the mountains or in the beach. So like, think about where you would enjoy spending your time. Do you want to be somewhere serene or do you want to be in party central? Um, how close do you need to be to friends and family back home? You know, is your family healthy? Is there a chance you're going to have to hop on a plane and get home pretty quick? Uh, are you running a business? And I would say like, if you want to live, um, a location independent life, uh, starting a remote business is probably the best thing you can do because it's the easiest way to live in different countries, um, on like tourist visas because just like the states a lot of other countries they don't want you coming in and taking jobs but if you go in with your own job then it's much easier to stay so if you don't have a remote job yet think about some things that you could do to make that happen and if you're interested just like moving with your company then see if they have any global opportunities and there's other websites out there I'm trying to think of the one that um, Jabatical. I think it's like Jabatical. That's a website where they've got jobs listed in different countries, and those com- companies are actually like they're looking for international talent. They really value that, and they will help move you. So I think those are some cool. Op- uh, Some people would say go and do like a test month in another country that you're thinking about living and maybe that's smart. I tend to just like pack up and go (laughs) like that's what I like to do and like just jump all in. But if you want to test. You could try house sitting. Um, I have some friends who have done that and that's like free accommodation. And then you're just like taking care of people's cats or plants or whatever. And there's a website called house cares where you could check that out and then I have um, some friends who've been traveling the world for like god three years now it's a couple he's American she's Brazilian they had planned to live in the states together the U.S. denied her a visa so they were like all right well we're just going to make our home everywhere and so they've been working and traveling and um, the service that they use for that let me think what is it called um, work away And that lets you just like work five hours a day for room and board. And then you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. So you test out a location that you might want to live in. I love all of this. First of all, I'm sitting here laughing because you were like, find a place that would fit your personality now and not who you want to be. And I'm laughing because when I was recently in Australia, I fell in love with Brisbane and I told mm-hmm. everyone I want to move there, I want to move there. And everyone who knows me was like, but you can't because you are just so high energy and fast paced. And that is like one of the slowest cities in Australia. <laughs> and which is like so funny because I'm, I, I hope that one day I can slow down and relax, but that's funny. And two, 
I love how you also said like test the city out beforehand, unlike you who just sort of moves. And I feel like Sarah, you and I would be the greatest travel buddies and friends because I also don't plan ahead. I'm like, I'm going to move to California and I just go. So I like that. You know, I think all the tips you gave are great for multiple different types of people and different personalities. So I love that. And um, the other thing I do want to talk to you about is podcasting. You have become like the podcast pro, the podcast consultant. You have podcasting step by step, which helps people learn how to podcast. And I had this on my Instagram story today around how podcasting is one of the greatest things we can be doing right now, as a lot of people are home, uh, especially in America with this whole coronavirus. So I know that a lot of people are not starting podcasts because they think that podcasts are so oversaturated and there's a podcast for everything. And that's not true, right, Sarah? So can you give people advice on if they want to start a podcast, how they can think of a topic without just assuming that podcasting is oversaturated? Well, I would say, you know, there's probably million podcasts out there right now, but don't let that number scare you because there's so many more YouTube, um, you know, channels and blogs. And even though there's a lot of them, a lot of people aren't doing them consistently. So I think there's only maybe like 300,000 that are still active. And so, I, and I, one of the reasons I think this is, is because people on a whim are like, hmm, I'm going to start a podcast, but they don't start with a plan in place. And so I think that's fundamental. And that's one of the things that I teach in my course podcast launch Academy is it's not enough to just like have an idea. You need to sort of have a plan in place where you can, can uh, where you can create consistent like quality content that your ideal listener really wants. And so I think step one is figuring out what your why is, what your purpose is, and who your ideal listener is. They say the riches are in the niches, and that's definitely true when it comes to podcasting. So, you know, you might want to have a, I don't know, like a marketing podcast or something, but that's way too broad. Like who is the person that you want to be serving with this podcast? Maybe maybe it's hairdressers, right? Like maybe you're a hairdresser or you used to be a hairdresser and you realize that your colleagues and other people are having like a really hard time, um, you know, promoting themselves. And so you know how to market so you want to create a podcast to serve a very specific audience, hairdressers. So there's so much that you could do with that, right? You could teach them um, Instagram. You could teach them Pinterest. If you wanted to go that niche and keep it all online, like online marketing for hairdressers. So think about um, who you want to serve, what you're interested in, what you're good at. When these things start to overlap, that's where you get the whole zone of genius concept. Um and then the next thing that I love to say is you want to make sure you have a plan. So think about creating a podcast, kind of like writing a book. Like, do you have enough to fill a book? So going back to that hairdressing, like marketing uh, example, that's like the main idea. And then what are the chapters of this book? So maybe um, that person would want to cover uh, marketing, as I said, maybe content marketing, monetization. So those are like different things that you could dive deeper in into like each episode. So you've got like different buckets and then you can like just keep drilling down from there to, for specific episode ideas. So I just threw a ton at you. Um, so no. I'll just let you ask what. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, it's great because I like what you said. Like, yeah, there's a ton of podcasts, but a lot of them are not even active and people start and they stop. And it's the same thing with blogging. Like there were so many blogs in 2012, but people wrote two posts and then fell off. So you're right. Like if you have a topic an audience and a purpose and you stay committed, like you could have a really awesome podcast. And I think you will be one of the first to say that podcasting, do you, okay, do you agree with this? Do you think starting a podcast is hard to do or do you think it's just confusing because there's too many resources on the internet? Like what's your take on this? Because I feel like courses like yours make people see that it's actually really easy to do, right? 
Yeah. Oh, I think analysis paralysis is one of the major things that hold people back. Like they're seeing all like they want to do it. But then I think it's analysis paralysis. And then that's also kind of an excuse. I think like the biggest thing is people are afraid of putting themselves out there. And I suffered from both of these things. Right. (laughs) Like I I wanted to start a podcast for years before I actually like pulled the trigger. And so I spent a lot of time like, hmm, what should I do? Should I put my website on Squarespace or should it be on WordPress? You know, should I have this microphone or should I have that microphone? And um, I think a lot of that, like you want things to be just right. And so I think that makes people stuck. And then also people are just like, oh, what if people say something bad? What if people think I'm dumb? And I think once you can get past these worries, um, that's where the magic happens. And one thing that I like to tell my students is like, you can't wish yourself brave, right? Like I kept waiting for the day when I was going to feel like brave enough to start a podcast. Courage is going to catch up with you once you start taking brave actions. And so, you know, do the brave thing. And then those courageous feelings are going to catch up with you. Amen to that. Sarah, you have been amazing. I want to end this interview like we end them all. Fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger. So... Prioritize what makes you happy rather than keeping that on the bottom of your to-do list. So I think we often prioritize work and chores and the things that we're supposed to be doing rather than taking time to enjoy life. And I really want to flip that around. So prioritize what makes you happy and do that first. Amazing. I love it, Sarah. Please tell our listeners where they can find out more about you, all of your travels and your podcasting course. Well, I have two podcasts, Podcasting Step by Step, so you can listen to that if you want to learn more about podcasting. And I still have my travel podcast, Postcard Academy, so that's postcardacademy.co. And if you would like a bunch of free travel resources, or, well, podcasting resources, I'll give you that one first. If you want a bunch of free podcasting resources, you can go to sarahmikatel.com. So that's S A R A H M I K U T E L.com, and you'll find everything there. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sarah. You were awesome. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, And join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.